it's been a couple of weeks now since you've uh, taken over the post. Um, for those who don't know, obviously you've been involved in local politics for a long time. Tell us a little bit about your background and why you feel you are uh, the right person to run the state Democratic Party. Thank you. Well, I have uh, over 27 years managing multi-billion dollar projects, uh, infrastructure projects uh, for engineering firms. So my last project was a light rail transit system, um, which was $7.2 billion. Um, and that includes, you know, managing resources, personnel, contractors, consultants. So I had that kind of background professional experience to bring to the job. Okay. Um, correlations between uh, that kind of job and the Democratic Party <laughs> are what? Okay. So, you know, as, as you know, a lot of money goes through the state party and especially during the time of the coordinated campaign, um, a lot of money goes to the party. Um, we also have a lot of contracts with consultants. We have to hire staff, uh, manage that personnel and manage our resources, allocate the resources effectively so that we're making sure that we're doing the job right. And we're making sure that we have the resources to elect Democrats. Okay. It was a uh interesting to watch the race as it developed and as it as it uh, took hold there's the quote establishment democrats and and I, I, it seems like there's a divide i think there seems to be an agreement that there's a divide i guess the question is moving forward is there a desire by you to keep the party together moving forward to try and bridge both edges of the same uh, dnc absolutely well i've actually been involved here since 2016, I've been up was on both central committees, and then in 2017, I ran for executive board for the Clark County Democratic Party. So I've actually been doing the work for quite a while now here in Nevada, um, working with all wings or factions, how, you know, whatever you want to call it, of the Democratic Party. So um, this isn't something new. There's always been, you know, this a uh, little bit of a divide between, you know, what direction each faction wants to take the party. But at the end of the day, we're all Democrats and we will unify and we will elect Democrats. Um, that's what we're here for. So we uh, know that no progress is possible without electing Democrats. So progressives are very invested in making sure that happens. And we're also invested in bringing everyone together to make sure that we are ready in 2022. Uh, because to us, it's an absolute necessity that we reelect Governor Sisolak and Senator Cortez Masto. And we have a Senate majority. We're not gonna give that up. We're not gonna, we're absolutely not going to give that up. So we are here to do the work. And I think once everybody sees that we're doing the work um, to keep the Democratic Party not only functioning, but also expanding and growing the Democratic Party to include all different ideologies and also making sure that we're doing the outreach and the community engagement and BIPOC, BIPOC communities as well. So we're gonna be bringing people into the party, which is always a good thing for us here in Nevada. So you're not concerned about, again, the quote, establishment Democrat <laughs> kind of working around your own, uh, your own team? Well, I would highly caution against that because the state Democratic Party is the only effective structure for electing Democrats and for doing that kind of work, especially working with the coordinated campaign. Um, we're very closely aligned with the DNC right now. Um, we are you know, doing the work already. You know, we're open for business. And so it's not to the benefit of our Democratic candidates for there to be any kind of a divide or for any kind of a workaround um, because it, it puts them at risk and it puts our elections at risk. So it's very, very important that we are all working together. We're all on the same page. Uh, and I understand, you know, the little bit of concern there always is when there's transition or new leadership, uh, but I'm here to elect Democrats. That's my primary job. How much turnover has there been uh, at the state uh, Democratic Party since you took over? Uh, to my knowledge, there was uh, probably four staffers that quit. Uh, other than that, I haven't seen any huge turnaround. I, I haven't seen any resignations. Uh, we still have uh, almost 600 people on our state central committee. No one's resigned from that. So as far as I'm concerned, we're all still here and we're all doing the work. 
Okay. Uh, let's um, look ahead a little bit. Um, there's some discussion up at the legislative session about uh, changes to the elections. We all acknowledge what happened because of the coronavirus in the last general election and the primaries and the caucus and so forth. Um, what would you like to see uh, from a democratic standpoint moving forward? And what kind of are you looking ahead already to having a caucus, how that'll be given the changes for the, the next election? I expect that we will move to a primary system. I think the caucus has disenfranchised a lot of voters, although they were helpful in rural areas to bring people together. Um, we were finding that you know a lot of people found it difficult to participate on caucus day or weren't really comfortable participating in that kind of a format, even with the early voting. Um, you know, we saw that that a lot of people early voted and stood in line for hours to cast their ballot, you know, and, and so that tells us that people don't really like the caucus system. Um, and we've got to move to a primary system here in Nevada. And, and there is a bill going through the legislate, legislator uh, process right now. Um, and I expect that it will pass. He as I recall, though, the, the caucus framework certainly uh, was more beneficial to the more progressive end of the Democratic Party. Would going away from that compromise the ability of that element of the Democrats to have that voice, to have that uh, impact on the, on the election? Not at all. I think actually it will turn out more voters, which is always good for Democrats. I mean... When you're talking about non-voters, non-partisans, they don't really like to engage in a caucus system. Um, they're not comfortable with it. So we've got to do a better job of opening up the process and make sure that everyone has the opportunity to vote. And by doing primaries, running them like 7 a.m., 7 p.m. over multiple days, more people are going to vote. It's just that simple. So um, for us, for Democrats, that's always good. Uh, higher turnout is good for us. And, and I'm looking forward to moving to that primary process. You were mentioning uh, now that you're uh, in running the state uh, Democratic Party, uh, getting all uh, sides involved, reaching out and so forth to both ends of the political party, all the issues and et cetera, et cetera. Do you think the establishment that was in place before was not taking those into consideration when they were setting up platforms and they were picking candidates when they were fundraising whatever advocates whatever the case may be were there aspects of what was happening on the ground that was missing maybe in the political in the democratic party well what i've seen in the past is that we've had a lot of successes um, but it's time to build on those successes and start moving into some more innovative solutions, some more customizable solutions in different counties. Um, I've had meetings with rural chairs and talk about their needs in those areas. And, and we're mapping out statewide election strategies from the bottom up. Uh, so I don't think it's a matter of, of, of this, this so-called divide. I think it's a matter of opening up more opportunities and more opportunities for people to engage, for them to be involved. We need to be out doing the work year round, not just at election time, if we're going to engage people. Um, when I hear people talking, when I'm out in the community, they talk about the fact that, yes, we, we turned out to vote against Trump in the last election, but we feel like our needs aren't being met. We feel like we're not being represented or we're, our voices aren't being heard. So we have to do a better job of engaging on the ground with all of our BIPOC communities, with everyone in Nevada, to make sure that we're listening, that we're addressing those concerns and those issues, and that we're working hard to bring more people into the party by giving them uh, the opportunity to be part of the process um, and that they feel like we are invested in those communities and then they in turn are more likely to turn out when we need them to vote. Uh, so we're not gonna just pay lip service at election time, we're gonna be on the ground engaging year round. And I think that's going to be the key in building on the past successes and looking to the future um, and being able to expand and grow the Democratic Party because we have to be able to do that. Uh, we can't just exist in a bubble um, I think a lot of times um, in the past, as Democrats, we tended to sort of um, isolate ourselves 
and just expect, you know, that certain communities or certain constituencies were going to automatically vote Democrat. And we found that that's not true. Um, I've also been concerned about the narrowing margins in our in our last victories. I mean, we've seen that we've had some successes. We've had some really great successes in the past. Uh, but in order to continue those successes, we've got to stop that trend where nonpartisan registration numbers continue to grow at a fast pace and and Democratic Party and even Republican Party registration has gone down. So it's it's on us to make sure that we start to build those numbers back up again. It's on us to do the work and make sure that communities feel that we are representing them. So that's the kind of work that we're gonna continue. So by extension then, is it fair to say that maybe, and I'm just gonna use the term read machine, is the read machine antiquated versus say, maybe yourself and others, whether it's a more progressive a, a DSA point of view, a more, a different take or a different point of view on the Democratic Party. Is the read machine uh, antiquated? I just think that we're looking to build on those past successes. Um, we recognize all the hard work and all the success of everyone, uh, you know, of the Democratic Party in the past several years. I mean, we know that there have been some huge Democratic victories. I mean, we have a Democratic governor for like the first time in 20 years. Um, you know, we have a Senate majority in D.C. now. So we've got to hold on to that. And by building on the past successes, I think that we can continue those successes and improve on them. Um, and that's all we're looking to do is build on the past successes and make sure that we're starting to talk about new ideas. I mean, this pandemic has shown us that we have to start thinking outside the box a lot more. We have to think about ways to engage people, um, not just you know door knocking, which will continue to be important, phone banks, which will continue to be important, but we've got to look at new technologies, new ideas for engaging people year round if we're going to expand on those successes. So finally, what's one big outside the box thing that you want to do right away? Well, we're moving to, to reorganize our get out the vote structure. So we're going to be rolling out an assembly captain program and we're doing a pilot program at the Red Rock Democratic Club in the next couple of months. So we're restructuring our get out the vote um, to make it more manageable um, and to make it more personal. We're going to be doing a lot of um, Zoom until we can do in-person events at each level so that we're gonna try and get our candidates to engage with people earlier on, not just at election time and start holding like town halls in every single district so that we're engaging people now, not waiting until election time. And that people start to feel like they can give that kind of input, hold Q and A's. Um, we're also looking at new texting technology, um, new uh, voicemail technology. So we're looking at a lot of different ideas to come up with um, hybrid solutions, but customizable solutions, adaptable solutions, so that we're constantly looking at ways to get better. Um, instead of just relying on, you know, the past methodology um, in this society and the way things are moving so fast all the time and, and people engage differently than they did before, we've got to keep up with that. We've got to keep pace with that, those changes. Uh, I think I'm out of questions. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, unless you have anything else you wanted to add, I appreciate you setting up your phone and the bookshelf and the whole deal. I appreciate it very much. Uh, Thank you. No, we're just very, very committed to reelecting Senator Cortez Masto and Governor Sisolak. Um, We are not going to be the ones that that give up that Senate majority. I can tell you that right now. As hard as as hard as Georgians worked, we're going to do that work too. Just real quick, real quick. Um, you talk about Senator Cortez Masto and mm -hmm. desire to get her, uh, keep her in office. Any, um, despite the fact that by all accounts, whether it was uh, Senator Cortez Masto, so Representative Lee, others, they weren't necessarily pulling for you to win. <laughs> uh, does that, does that affect you at all? Does that bother you at all? No, no, not at all. I mean, that's just internal politics. That's the way things go sometimes. 
Um, it doesn't stop me from doing the work. I've got things to focus on. I've got work to focus on. And I've got to expand this Democratic Party here in Nevada. I've got to reelect all of our Democratic candidates. And we're starting to map out strategies for looking at, at other districts where we haven't necessarily had a candidate to run or we've sort of given ground to Republicans. Um, we're looking at you know, school board races, city council races. We're looking at other ways to expand, you know, on the chessboard, so to speak. So we're going to be looking at all of those races and looking at, at a bottom up approach as well, so that we're engaging at a grassroots level and getting people actively involved in the party. So it really it really um, doesn't affect the way I do business. And I don't consider it personal. I, I know that's the way things go sometimes. It's just that's the way things go. Um, but it doesn't distract me from focusing on what I need to do. And in fact, um, you know, I've talked with a lot of our representatives and a lot of our legislators and, you know, I'm going to show them we're ready to do the work and we're going to succeed. So it, it's just that simple. All right. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you again you. for accommodating the, uh, the interview and the Zoom and everything. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.